The internet is pissed at Tommy Hilfiger for his comments regarding Gigi Hadid. However, he's responded. So maybe that we've heard more context of the story. Maybe your opinions will change. Maybe they won't. So Tommy Hilfiger, he told E! News, quote, Gigi is truly the definition of a Tommy girl. Her magnetic personality is bright, confident, and always optimistic. He goes on to say any statement to the contrary is completely false. The headline from the interview with Yahoo was misleading and has since been corrected. So that Yahoo interview, what happened was they talked to him about a number of different things. One of the questions that they asked him was, how did you have this collaboration with Gigi Hadid? Because Gigi now has this Tommy Hilfiger line that she's collaborated with him. It's done very well, very successful. And he says here a little bit of the backstory, how that all came about and why he even thought to do a line with her. And this had to do with when she first walked the 2015 fall fashion show, his fashion show in New York. He says, quote, our casting director said, she doesn't really fit because you know, she's not quite as tall as the other girls. She's not quite as thin. So they put a red, white, and blue poncho on her. The garment covered a lot of her body, unfortunately, but received millions of hits. That's what gave him an idea, all the millions of hits. He says, I said, you know, why don't we ask her to design a line with us? So I said, Gigi, come design this with me. We'll do a Gigi Tommy Hilfiger line. And it did really well. So now that you know a little bit more to the story, let's see if that changes things. Maybe it won't. Thoughts, five words or less. G. this took a turn. Tommy Hill figured it out. A fashion faux pas? I don't know. I don't, so I, First of all, Gigi Hadid is part of the new holy trinity of supermodels. Back in the 90s, you had Naomi, Cindy, Claudia, Linda, that were Kate, that were just everything. Now you have Kendall, Joan, Gigi. So I feel like that actually, that probably did happen. Casting director says, oh, this Gigi girl, she's, she's great, but she's a bit too fat. Tommy's like, send her in the poncho. And then all of a sudden, the poncho is out of control. Tommy's business hasn't been doing well previously to this. They were down 4.5% every year domestically. Yes, wow. overseas, a lot of people buy American goods because they're obsessed with American pop culture. But Gigi Hadid is the model of now. When she graced the face of Tom Ford's Velvet Orchid in 2014, that set off everything. Then came Maybelline. Um, she's, she's the face of Versace right now. So Tommy thought, okay, cool. Well, we're not doing so well. This was what you have, what you call failing up. He screwed up, but it worked out in both of their favors. So I don't think that it, it was... I, I think that that's, it was a negative that turned into kind of a positive for both of them. And then Gigi Hadid's capsule collection, Tommy X Gigi, is doing phenomenally well. She also has a fragrance called That Girl, which is available at Macy's, your fragrance destination. So <laughs> it, it was like Tommy got smart and thought, well, let's just capitalize on this, this little mishap and make it seem like, yes, we're doing, we're doing good by Gigi. But I do think that that is a true story. That's so sad, but that is why are we surprised when you look at the fashion industry and you understand that the vast majority of these models are very thin and they're very tall. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the fashion industry. When you look at high fashion and when you look at these runway shows. Now, someone like Gigi Hadid, she ended up getting these fashion runway shows because of her popularity as a print model. And she had you know, some of that tie with the reality show too, the Beverly Hills Housewives right. and her mom, but more so she's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But she didn't fit in. I don't agree with that. I wish that wasn't the case, but she did not fit in. So he is, he, it's all part of the problem. He simply, he's part of the problem too. He's stating what happened, um, but that's what exists. And, and it's, it's not going sad. away. It's, it's not going away. It's, what do you think, Grace? Um, I think that Jason, I think you summed it up really well, where something happened and uh, they made a judgment call and then- To cover her up. To cover her up. And uh, then they sort of realize, I think the fact, I mean, we've talked about this before, the fashion industry is having to come to terms with the fact that they don't necessarily decide who is in and who is out anymore. Right. Instagram Great does, point. YouTube does. You know, we, we, because we are all connected with social media, we say what we think is beautiful. And we have sort of as a society decided that Gigi Hadid is it. And it's, it's weird to think of, since she is such a huge supermodel, that there was some casting director or someone that was like, ooh, like, what are we gonna do with her? she is thin, that's what's crazy. She has an amazing body, it's very strange, but. You, but you are right, Sam, in saying that she didn't fit in. You know, that there, that, that was a call. This was probably a true story that happened. And it looks like, hopefully, that uh, Tommy Hilfiger sort of learned from this um, mistake. But was it really a mistake? Because it, it led to the line that exactly. she now has. So I think it's just but a what's true the story intent, that we can... though? That's Whether it's a mistake or not, was there intent to cover her up, if that's Pro the case? Yeah, I think sure. there was. That's sad. That's but I think that they're sort of eating their words now, where it's like, oh, you guys actually love her? Oh, we... Because it, it's... 
I think it, it just goes back to the tastemakers. They are not, the fashion industry, the way that taste is decided isn't really only up to them anymore. People aren't just going to Vogue to find out what is in style. They're going to their Instagrams. They're going to look at the, the how-to videos on YouTube or like what, looking at haul videos of people's style who you like. And all different shapes and sizes, which I all love. All different shapes which and I sizes. Love. And That's, Tommy Hilfiger's yeah. business, I'm sorry, Sam. So, no, go ahead. so, I mean, I'm a 90s kid. I grew up wearing Tommy Hilfiger. I had Tommy Hilfiger polos, everything, because he actually was a huge, rep a huge representation of urban pop culture. Mm -hmm. Because when you wore Tom, I mean, rappers talked about Tommy Hilfiger top. I remember here. Salt and Pepper. Yeah, always you know married. the cologne. Tommy was my yeah. first fragrance. So I mean, he he made it. Him and Ralph Lauren and Calvin Klein back in the '90s made being all American an every race thing, not a white guy thing. But you know, you could subscribe and buy a piece of an all American fashion label because you were wearing Tommy Hilfiger. But the, when he start when he started moving away from that, his business started tanking. Tommy's had fragrances that have flopped. He had a fragrance in 2010 called Loud, and I and I and I saw a BBC documentary on making the fragrance, and it did horribly. And Tommy Hilfiger in this documentary came off very like, well, I mean, who's gonna buy this? Like, who 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 are we catering to? He's very um, what's the word I'm looking for with Tommy Hilfiger? Uh, dismissive of certain things, you know. And so when I read this article about Gigi Hadid, I'm thinking, Tommy. You have been in, in trouble in the past for kind of omitting, not omitting, but using or choosing, not being. Oh, well. He was a, he was accused of being racist. Remember, you know, right? But he, but Oprah went on stood Oprah, up for him. And, yes. and so Oprah went, stood went on up Oprah, for him, and so which that was a rumor. Which okay, we don't know. Okay, we, there's there's different sides, right? I mean, okay, I, but this right here yeah. just harkens back to that about Tommy being not being cool with everyone. You know, yeah. catering to a certain demographic, a certain type of female. And then if you look at the Gigi Hadid X capsule collection. A lot of stuff is loose fitting. It's not. It's not um, as tight and body conscious as previous collections. So I don't know, man. I feel like Tommy. I call. Bull I wish I had my shade hat here today because I call bullshit Do on all. You? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I feel like Tommy. Again, he failed up. You, the universe liked you, Tommy Hilfiger, in this instance he with kind Gigi of, Hadid. That's interesting, because he put it on the casting director, but at the end of the day, you're the designer. You should be able right. to tell the casting director, I want women of this shape, of this size. I think it's great to have someone of, yep. of, of, of Gigi Hadid's size, who's probably like a size two, right. which is crazy to even like contemplate that that's uh, overweight for a runway model. But... Um, but you're right. It's, it shouldn't be the casting director's yeah, decision. It should be his decision, sure. and it should be influenced by what we all like to see nowadays, which is women in all different shapes and sizes. Yeah, he should have the the mindset of like, oh my gosh, we have Gigi Hadid in our show. Let's Thank make you. her look fucking awesome. Amazing. But instead, you have the fashion industry who's like, this is what we've always done. This is what has always worked. It's not working so well anymore. But all right, well, uh, oh, there's this girl from Instagram. Let's just put her in a poncho. Like it just they they don't understand the. They scope. wanted to incorporate her. The landscape her. has changed, and the fashion right. industry needs to change along with it. And, and if they, they wanted, don't, then more trash like this is going to come out. And they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. In the sense that they wanted to incorporate her because she was blowing up a year ago. And so they wanted to have that. They wanted her to share on her social media that she's doing this runway show. But at the same time, they just stuck her in a poncho. I mean, in the poncho. And then the poncho, I mean. The poncho's fierce. Are you say I um, love it. Really? I, I mean, would I wear it? No, but I thought she looked dope walking. Well, cause, cause she, she looked street, and I right, liked that. Right, I did. Right, right. But yeah, no one's going to go walk around in that big of a poncho. I'm about to do it as soon as we're done taping. <laughs> Tommy, we wish you the best, man. Cause. But interesting. I don't know where I fall. I mean, you understand what my thoughts on the whole fashion industry but I don't know all of his history. I want to learn more about and I, his history. And, and, you know, and like I said, I did my homework on his business because Tommy Hilfiger was once, you could buy Tommy Hilfiger everywhere, Macy's, and now even, okay, so I'm a fragrance blogger, so I, I keep up on fragrance. There's a lot of his stuff that's not released domestically because people don't care. Hmm. You know, he had a, he had a fragrance. Until he has like the, a face with him. That's why like that girl with Gigi okay. with the capsule is doing well. Interesting. All right, please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, yeah. There's so much here, so please. I call bullshit. He calls bullshit. <laughs> we want to know what you think, and we'll see you next time on Pop Sugar.